Well, this is the same chipper ball. I've got one weather app telling me it's going to be clear most of the night, and then another weather app, the clear air side one, telling me it's going to be 100% cloud from 8 o'clock onwards. So, my dilemma is do I set up or not? When I look at the sky, pretty good. Now, I've been caught out like this before. I've set the gear up, and within the hour, it's been actually raining. So, I've now got to make the decision. Do I set up or not? I think I'm gonna give it a go. Well, guess what? Cloud. So consequently, I didn't set up at all. I've done that so many times. It's looked promising. I've set up and within the hour, I've had to take it all down again. Hi, I'm Simon and this is Simon's Astro. So this is what it's come to. This is my evolution of astrophotography. I decided to set the gear up indoors and just remind myself of how it all started for me. I started with this, just a DSLR on a tripod. And I moved on to this one. And then I made a big jump actually to this one over here. And I've recently acquired this one. This is the HUQ5. That's the EQ6R Pro with the Esprit 120. And that's the Sky Guider Pro. And that's my Canon 70 Mark II on a Manfrotto tripod with a Sigma 10 to 20 wide angle lens. So you're interested in astrophotography and you want to know how to get started. Well, this is what I did. During the first lockdown, I spent a lot of my spare time on YouTube um, watching a lot of astrophotography uh, video channels and I got a lot of my information from there in fact most of my information from there but there's a couple of things you have to consider first do you want to just observe space or do you want to photograph it and the budget how much can you afford to spend on the equipment and also the time how much time can you spare on the hobby because trust me it can be very time consuming you'll be surprised at the results you can get by just using the equipment that you may already have. If you've got a DSLR, um, a sturdy tripod is quite important, and a, a normal camera lens, and an end of the lometer. So with the SkyGuarder Pro, I was using a laptop, and I was running APT, which is Astrophotography Tool, which is a free software, and it was what I started with. I'll show you a couple of images that I have taken with this tracker. Something to consider though, if you are just using a tripod and not a star tracker, you will have to observe something called the 500 rule. That's quite simple really, it's just a calculation that you have to do um, to work out the shutter speed that you can use to avoid getting egg shaped stars or even star trails. And how that works is, if you're using a Canon, for example, um, a crop sensor camera, you have to take into consideration the 1.6 crop factor on a Canon. It's a 1.5 on a Nikon. So for example, on a Canon, if you're using a 50 mil lens, um, you have to multiply that by 1.6, which is the crop factor, which will give you a number of 80. So you then divide 500 by 80, which will give you a figure of 6.25. So you can safely use a shutter speed of six seconds with your lens set to its widest F number on a tripod and you can keep the shutter open for six seconds and you should be okay without getting star trails. Um, another example would be if you were to change the lens to say a 300 mm lens, still with a crop factor of 1.6, that's gonna make the number 480, so now if you divide 500 by 480, you get a figure of 1.04.
So literally you can only keep the shutter open for one second before you start getting star trails. So I started off with my standard DSLR and a tripod and I was just doing Milky Way shots and really wide field shots using the 500 rule. But then I got a um, star tracker and I'll take you around that now and show you that. So this is the Ioptron Skyguide Pro and this came with the um, iPolar built in and I can highly recommend that. It really helps you with your power alignment. And there it is. It's built into the little tracker there. Um, I also upgraded the wedge with the William Optics upgrade and that made a great help and also the saddle as well. These knobs much bigger, much easier to handle and it's just a nicer finish all together. It works off a battery that you charge up so you can charge it and then you take it out into the field and it will literally last you all night, possibly even two nights. So the main limitation with this mount is it's not a go-to mount. It only moves in RA, which is right ascension, and you have to manually find your targets. Now that can be time consuming. Um, it wasn't long before I realized that I actually wanted a go-to mount. So, I mean, it did me well for a time, but I decided that I was gonna get another mount. So instead of going from a mount like this, to maybe one like this, which is the HEQ5, which I actually recently acquired, I jumped straight to this. A little bit of a jump, I know, but this is the EQ6R Pro, and it's a fairly heavy duty mount. It's hopefully gonna last me for quite a while. It carries the scope on top very well, which is the Skywatcher Esprit 120. That's 840 mil focal length. Um, and on top of that is the Skywatcher Evo Guide 50ED guide scope. Um, the camera on here is the 2600 MC Pro. Um, EAF and ASA Air Plus. Also the Pegasus Powerbox Advance. So as you can see, you can load it up quite well and the mount holds it all okay. I, I don't have any problems. Um, I, I get quite good guiding with that. The last slot of guiding I had was under 0.5. It was, it was between 0.3 and 0.4 and that lasted all night. So I was quite happy with that. So on the HEQ5, I've currently got the Redcat 51 and that's with the Canon 60DA DSLR on there. And I've got the, um, what's that, 30, 30mm f4 mini guide scope by ZWO and that's the USB 3 ASI 120 mini. Um, this rig I plan to change the camera before long. I'm gonna get a mono camera and I'm gonna get a seven position filter wheel and some filters. So that's to follow. So it really comes down to your budget and what you want to spend. I think my recommendation would be get the best mount you can afford at the time you buy your equipment. Because if you spend the money on the mount, it's going to last and it should hopefully future proof you for putting on bigger scopes and loading the scopes up with extra bits like I've done here because it all adds to the weight. And if your mount can handle it, then you'll be set up for well into the future. So there you have it. That's my gear and that's how I got here. Uh, you can achieve good results from a smaller setup, um, but be prepared once you go down that rabbit hole, if you haven't got a long piece of rope to climb back out, you'll be stuck for good. So be warned, but I'll say most importantly, enjoy this fantastic hobby and keep looking up. So I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope you liked the video and maybe even found it useful. And um, if you would like to subscribe to the channel, that would be much appreciated. And um, I look forward to seeing you all on the next video. I wish you all clear skies.